Hello, welcome. Um, today I wanted to do something a little bit different and instead of talking about a web vulnerability, I wanted to have a look at Active Directory. Um, Active Directories are, as I'm sure many of you know, very complicated. They're often made up of hundreds or maybe even thousands of objects, which include computers and users, accounts, policies, groups, etc. Um, and all of those objects have different relationships with one another. Um, which makes it like a really complicated network um, that's very difficult to sort of keep track of and maintain good situational awareness of. Um, and that's where a tool named Bloodhound comes into the picture, which is a really powerful tool for attackers, but uh, also for defenders. Um, so that's what I wanted to take a look at today. So what is Bloodhound? Um, Bloodhound's a tool basically that graphically will represent the Active Directory environment, um, and it presents it in a really sort of um, intuitive uh, way with nodes and edges, which are the relationships between those nodes. And it's also got a whole bunch of built-in tools and queries that make discovering attack paths and weaknesses really straightforward for both defenders and attackers. Um, so today I'll uh, be doing a demonstration of Bloodhound. Um, I'll start by doing a quick walkthrough of the setup. Um, then I'll demonstrate the collection process for gathering data and then um, demonstrate Bloodhound in action. Um, so talking about the setup, I've built a um, bog standard Windows Server 2019 um, uh, with an Active Directory. I made it the domain controller um, if I have a look, uh, I've then run a automated tool called Bad Blood, which um, generates a whole bunch of fake data, um, users, groups, um, permissions, all sorts of things. Um, uh, you know, hundreds of different objects, and makes some of them deliberately vulnerable. And it's just a way of um, creating a test environment to, to play with um, Bloodhound. And that's on the same network as my uh, attacker machine, which is a Kali Linux box. So moving on to talking about collection, pretty much any Active Directory user can be used to collect the information for Bloodhound. And um, there are a few limitations like um, uh, privilege session information. There's some detail in GPO info that you might not be able to get without administrator privileges, but for the most part, you know, even a low privilege user will be able to collect all the information that you'll see today, certainly. And it's also possible to collect the information from a non-domain joined computer. Um, you, all you really need is valid credentials for any user of a domain. There are a whole bunch of different collection methods, um, but predominantly the recommendation from Bloodhound is to use the approved tool which is Sharphound. It's a C Sharp um, tool and um, uses a mixture of Windows API functions and um, LDAP queries to um, gather the information that it requires. Um, Sharphound will be flagged in most situations by antivirus and defender, um, in spite of the fact that many blue teams or defenders use this tool, but it's absolutely possible to um, run it directly from memory or even, as I'll demonstrate today, run it remotely. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is um, you'll see I've created a user called basic user. It is as default as it's possible to make. Um, there are no particular permissions. It's literally just a member of um, domain users. And so it's a, a generic user account. Um, and I'm going to use credentials for this account to demonstrate uh, collecting all of the domain controller information. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a Kerberos ticket granting ticket. Basically, there's two ways to authenticate with uh, in a Windows environment. You can either use NTLM, which is the older method, and it involves passing hashes around, um, hash passwords. And the more modern and somewhat more secure method is um, using Kerberos, which is um, a very detailed uh, rabbit hole, which we can get into maybe in a future video. So the first thing I'm going to do is use a tool set um, called, there we go, Impacket. Um, 
and this will request uh, from the domain controller. It will request a ticket granting ticket for my basic user. So if I send that request with my credentials, it's saving a authorization ticket. I can now pass that as my authentication with a tool called Bloodhound Python, which is a, um, a data gatherer. I'm going to tell it that I want to use Kerberos for authentication. I'm going to give it the name of the domain controller, uh, the name server for DNS resolution, um, collection method. There are a few different collection methods uh, which have implications for how noisy it will be on the network. I specify the domain name and a user, and I'm telling it that I want the output to be zipped up. So if I make that request, we can see that uh, it's found my domain. It's, um, it's got my authorization. It's found a bunch of computers. There's one domain in the forest. Um, there you go, almost two and a half thousand users, 500 groups, etc., etc. And this is all now stored in a zip file. So that's uh, more or less all it takes to collect the data. It's relatively quick. Um, the next thing I need to do is start up the database on which Bloodhound runs, which is Neo4j. Neo4j is a NoSQL database. It uses graph theory. And basically that means it's optimized for identifying and presenting the relationships and networks and makes it really good for, for this sort of uh, application um, basically stores data instead of in relational tables it stores it in three pieces um, with um, two nodes and then a, a connection between those two nodes which is the relationship so now we've got the server running I can start up Bloodhound Bloodhound's just a Java application that sits on top of the Neo4j database and allows the sort of graphical presentation Okay, so we've got um, Bloodhound open now. Um, we can upload the data we've just extracted. And uh, within that zip file, we can see that there's uh, a sequence of JSON files. Um, so that's the results of the LDAP queries and the information that's been gathered. Um, it's just held in JSON form. And now that's uploaded we have our database. So to start with, I'm just going to grab the domain object itself, which is the root object of the domain. And by selecting a node, it will bring up information on the left-hand side in this window, which uh, includes overarching statistics, I suppose, um, information directly from the Active Directory about that object. Um, and then the results of some automated queries, including group membership, um, trusts, inbound and outbounds, control rights, etc. So that, that sort of information can be used to drill forward and backwards throughout the domain. But to start with, I'll just um, select map OU structure, and this will map uh, a single view of the entire domain. So if I just hide that. So this is our entire domain. We've got um, a whole bunch of different object types here. It's a bit of a mess. Um, so we've got the domain object itself. We have these, which are organizational units. We have containers, and we've also got groups. Um, if I open this group, I can select direct members, and we can see some examples of users. So this is a user object. Um, all of these objects you'll see all have relationships or what um, Bloodhound refers to as edges. These edges can be interrogated as well as the nodes. So I can look at that and it's basically telling me that Margaret is a, a member of this group and uh, explaining that the privileges of that group will um, uh, transfer to Margaret and inherit permissions from other groups inside. 
Um, if this were a abusable permission, then there'd be information here about how that can be exploited or abused and some OPSEC considerations, which are mostly targeted at uh, red teamers or attackers uh, for evading detection. But um, there's some useful information there about also not um, not damaging a um, Active Directory that you might be penetration testing. So those are that's the basic structure of um, Bloodhound. We have nodes and edges and an ability to sort of drill through to see relationships. Um, Bloodhound also has some pre-built um, queries as well, which are really useful for getting good awareness of what's happening in the domain. Um, so. For example, I can see all of the domain administrators um, just by running this query, and I'm able to then um, identify high value or sensitive accounts. So um, I can also mark these accounts as high value. Just by right clicking, I can say high value, and that can be useful because it in the shortest paths area, we have some automatic queries that will find shortest paths to high value targets. So if I mark this as high value, it's kind of equivalent of a defender marking it as a highly sensitive account. Um, we've also got, yeah, there are a lot of automatic queries here. I won't run through all of them, but um, you can see that they focus on um, categories of abusable privileges, um, users who can read lapse passwords, um, computers with unsupported operating systems, foreign group memberships. Uh, we have Kerber roastable and AS rep roastable accounts. So with a single click here, I can get all of the AS rep roastable users. Um, and uh, I won't go into what that is, but effectively it's a insecure configuration affecting Kerberos authentication, and it's basically low-hanging fruit for an attacker. And there you go, we've got a lot of uh, AS rep roastable users. Um, we also have the paths that I mentioned earlier, so we can look at um, shortest paths to domain admins, which will probably be a bit of a mess. Um, yep, but uh, you know that there's. Um, this gives you the information to then be able to drill through and identify um, relationships and permissions that could be abusable. Okay, so outside of the generic um, pre-built analytics um, queries that you can run, uh, you can also do specific searches to pathfind your way between two nodes. So let's say you had um, ownership or credentials of a particular user and you wanted to get to a target or there was a high value target in particular that you were after, um, you'd be able to uh, map out a route between those, um, those two nodes. And to do that, we'll select the pathfinding option in the top here. We'll select a user. Let's pretend that we have control of, uh, let's Eddie Kirkland. Eddie Kirkland, and we wanted to get to, let's say, control of the domain. And here we go. So we have Eddie Kirkland. Eddie Kirkland has generic all. Now I can drill into this and understand that this is effectively full control. Um, and I get a full walkthrough of how I might abuse those privileges, um, forcing a password change, um, targeted Kerberost. I can do this from a Linux or a Windows box and some additional information, including references to do further reading. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our pathway all the way through to domain controller and um, DC sync for anyone interested is a way to dump all of the um, Active Directory users credentials from the local security authority. Um, and in this instance was the goal. And so uh, this would be our pathway to achieving that goal 
or as a defender. Um, these would be permissions that we would want to audit and review um, to avoid this potential uh, privilege escalation pathway. Um, there isn't a lot of variability here in the relationship types or permission types. Um, that's a bit of a shortcoming of the tool that I use to automatically generate uh, random users and, and relationships. Um, but to give you an idea, this is a list of all of the edges um, or relationships uh, that um, Bloodhound supports. So there are lots and lots and lots of different um, potentially abusable permissions and um, a great amount of information on each of those about um, how it could be abused, OPSEC considerations, references, etc., um, which makes it very useful for attackers and defenders, as I said. And the final thing I wanted to mention was that there are some spin off products of Bloodhound. Uh, the most popular one for defenders is called Bluehound. Um, and Bluehound is very straightforward. It's basically a single click review and it'll present information back to administrators to um, help them simplify their domain and identify um, yeah, areas to focus on from a um, permissions review or audit perspective. Um, so that can be a really useful tool as well. And you can see it's uh, very similar in the way it it works and presents information as Bloodhound. Um, and there are a handful of other tools that focus on different areas like Plumhound, Improhound, Goodhound. Okay, that's all I wanted to talk about today. Just give an introduction to Bloodhound. It's just a really cool tool um, and I can imagine it being super useful for a domain administrator to get a, that helicopter view and see how they're domain fits together, you know, highlight some forgotten or accidental permissions uh, that may leak in and see those little really complicated multi-step links that um, could be abusable and address them before uh, they become a problem. Anyway, I hope you got something useful out of that. And um, once again, any questions or comments or requests, um, leave a comment or message me directly and look forward to seeing you in the next one.